Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 42 because we had two episode 40s in a row. So we skipped 41, just as you do. Yeah. I'm here and it's given away that he's also here. Yes. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about ways to get... I mean seriously. Sorry. He's just going to crack his knuckles halfway through my sentence. Thanks. <laughs> it's okay. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your Lego work in times of economic crisis. Economic crisis. <laughs> and what I mean by that is the cost of everything is going up. Like yeah. fuel, different types of fuel. I was going to say petrol. That, that's <laughs> also fuel, that isn't is it? fuel, yeah. yeah. Um, food. That's <laughs> like people fuel. People fuel. Um, everything. Electricity. That's like house fuel. That's what I meant by fuel. Okay. Like... Yeah, that, that is house fuel. Gas, cooking and heating fuel. Yeah. But yeah, that's... Pet food, that's animal fuel. <sighs> okay, I think we've got the point. Everything is getting more expensive. And everything's fuel. And everything is fuel, pretty much. Yeah. It's just, now I've said it this many times, it's a weird word. But yeah. anyway, and so therefore, our budget... Not that we believe in budgets for Lego, but anyway, that's a different podcast, which we might have done. I don't remember. I'm not sure we've done. It's getting squeezed. Well, there's not enough money to spend on Lego. And so, what do you do about it? Any thoughts, Ian? Not by Lego. <laughs> well, no, so it's an important thing. Lego is a luxury item. It's not a necessity. You shouldn't be putting yourself into debt for Lego. You shouldn't be prioritising heating your house or feeding your kids behind buying some plastic bricks. I feel like I had this conversation with a work colleague like two years ago when I was doing my, or he was doing his um, monthly budget and I was like, well, where's the Lego line? He's like, it's not a, it's not a need, it's mm. a want. And I was like, you're very, very wrong. Mm. But to be fair, you've got a valid point. Yeah. But at the same time, I need Lego. Yeah. So Lego does more for people than, it's just a, I like to spend money on Lego. It's quite a good tool for people to relax and things. And it's part of coping with this kind of stress of can I afford stuff. So yeah. you don't want to stop building the Lego. You kind of need it as your um, escapism. But there are ways that you can do it without spending money. Yeah. So if you look at like all the Creator 3-in-1 sets and the majority of people buy those and build them and never take them apart, that's... Two extra sets, I guess, yep. that you could pretend that you've bought. Like, yeah. Just break them down, build them again. Or break a set you like down, and then wait a couple of weeks, and then build it again. Like That's the joy of Lego. Yeah. You can build it again. You can also look up um, alternative builds yeah. for sets that you own. So like Rebrickable, that would help. There's a lot of yeah free ones out there. Yeah. But then even if you're spending on instructions like, say two pounds or five pounds you're not buying a yeah. 30 pound lego set so yeah. you, you can continue your hobby in a different way yeah. with a lesser expense i guess and then i guess the big one after that is mocks yeah it, it all comes down to what kind of lego builder you are if you yeah. want to create your own stuff then you're probably already doing that but maybe if you're a set builder now's the time to try doing that yeah because I mean, we very rarely use pieces from sets when doing what because we don't dismantle our sets. Yeah, we like to keep our sets built, and most of the sets we're, oh, a lot of the sets we're building are to go into the city yeah. anyway. So breaking them down to use in a mock, then you have to then get the yeah. pieces back to build that again. So mm -hmm. it's kind of silly. I guess you could also take the hobby a different way and like look at things you can do with the Lego you already have, like start doing stop motion films or something. That's a very different thing to do. Yep. But it's a way of enjoying your Lego. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways that you can sell your Lego. You could sell your Lego. You can sell concept. your old Lego. That's true. To fund buying new Lego. Yeah. So you have a finite number of sets that you can have and you just rotate through them. And people find that hard to do, I think. Yeah. I find that hard to do. How about swapping Lego with a friend? You trust the friend, so why not? Yeah. Would If you were swapping Lego with a friend, so you know the person and you're mm. friends with them, would you wash the Lego in between? Depends on the friend. <laughs> yeah. Would you re... Once you've 
built it and you were going to then swap it with a friend, would you bag it back up so they get the same sort of build experience? Or would you go, yeah, here's some pieces, ha ha. I don't know. I guess it depends how good a friend you are. Uh, it depends on the set as well. So, like, if you took a modular, yeah, it'd be very easy to dismantle one floor into a bag yes, and the next floor into true. a bag. Trying to dismantle it into this was originally bag one and this was bag two and they both make up the ground floor mm, is a that's... lot harder. So yeah, it's a lot. Well, it's not hard. It's just a lot more work. I don't think it's a difficult thing to do. People can sort bricks really easily. Yeah, it's just more effort. I think. Yeah, it's not hard unless you don't have the space to lay it all out. Or well, I suppose or you, you have to go to the work backwards through the book, find where you open the next bag and take everything off that's not in that picture. Oh, you're saying if you're sorting it as you're dismantling it. I was yeah. thinking you dismantle it and then you'd sort. That seems crazy. I don't understand why that's crazy to you. That's why I find it really frustrating watching you do the three in ones because I will take the three in one apart and then I'll build from the parts. Whereas you leave the three in one built, start on the next one and just slowly cannibalize the pieces. Yeah. And, and it, it, it's so frustrating to watch that. Like, yeah. why are you not just taking it all apart to start with? Why do you end up with a big tray of parts to shuffle through? Yeah, I think I prefer that to, like, having to keep like rotating and building around and like where's the piece that I want oh look there it is oh I have to take off a few pieces and it's like now do I search through the parts that I've got in here or do I search through the the built pieces I mean it's really weird you're very strange okay let me know in the comments below people if you would do it my way or Ian's way clearly should be my way (laughs) how else could you enjoy Lego without spending money so I think one of the things is making smart purchases you know, there are a lot of people who are very excited about the DeLorean. Yeah. But you've already seen the pictures of it. You've already seen videos about it. You will see reviews about it before you get anywhere close to a shop. Does it really matter if you buy it on day one? Ah, so waiting for deals as opposed yeah. to getting caught up in the hype. Mm. I mean, with the rising costs, there are only so many day ones that you can do. Yeah. Like the, unless you do that crazy thing and put yourself into debt like you said don't do how are you meant to keep up with all the releases maybe just stop looking at the Lego website that might be a good way to avoid the FOMO I don't know if you didn't know the Lego was coming then you'd be fine yeah I feel people who are listening to a Lego podcast will know what Lego is coming so I'm not sure yeah, but people listening to this really that could be advice um, that we give them stop listening not to us obviously <laughs> We'll try not to talk about current things, but <gasps> to to other people. I guess it's changing your mindset about the hobby of being a completionist or a collectionist and really looking at the shetch. The shetch that it will shring you shoy. It's about really looking at the sets and working out if those sets are going to bring you the joy you want yeah. as opposed to they're going to complete your collection. Yeah. So for me, I'm always after things to tick a box. Yes. Not like always. The two but... new Harry Potter books. I went, you said you really want them. I said, why? And you went, because I've got the other four. Yeah, I have the other four. That's not a sensible answer for getting something. It's not. But at the same time, I'm quite excited to build those four. And if I didn't then have the other two to go with it, because they all go around in like a, they like make a little thing. And... Do they? Yeah. You, if you put the backs to back... Yeah, I've seen that done with four. Surely by the time you've got six of them... They're going to be, be very cramped. small classrooms, yeah. Look, one of the books is purple. Stop it. Okay. I clearly need the purple one Obviously. above all the others. And um, I guess that's another thing that we haven't mentioned is go look in your backlog. Yeah. A lot of Lego collectors have vast backlogs. So if you can't afford to buy a new set, go shop your own shop. We do that. It does feel like a Lego shop sometimes in our house. When is it worth going into debt for? Is the answer never. So the only possible reason I can see, and it's still a dodgy reason at best is if you want to buy a set before it retires because you know the aftermarket prices are going to be more expensive Mm. i mean we generally know that aftermarket prices are going to be expensive for everything pretty much so then you're constantly just saying oh i'll just buy this one i'll just buy this one so it's a slippery slope it's only if you know that you are going to buy that set how can you know that you're going to buy that set if you never got money again you probably would never buy that set i think you'd there are some sets that you know you are going to buy in the yeah. future unless you completely leave the Lego hobby. Mm. Who would ever do that? People do. Madness. I know. 
you know, if you got run over by a Lego lorry, then it may put me off buying Lego. Oh, if I got run over, then you'd be upset. Yeah, about it and yeah. I like the May part. Like, may. There's there's nothing Lego can do bad enough that I would stop buying stuff. Even if you got run over by a lorry, I'd still possibly consider playing yeah. with Lego. Thanks, Ian. It's okay. Love you too. Think of, like, as long as I didn't die, think of the free Lego sets they'd give you as compensation. Yes. I feel actual compensation, which is better. Okay, this is a different turn of the podcast. <laughs> if you were to be um, maimed by a Lego lorry, but still able to I live... I the Lego lorries. Anyway. I don't know, but anyway, yeah. this Lego lorry hits you and you lose something that's not integral to building Lego. Um, a toe. You lose um, a toe? <laughs> And yeah. they offer you compensation. Would you want it in monetary form or Lego form? Which is better? I don't know. Because Lego value goes up mm. more than money goes up. Um, Maybe. Interest rates are going or would it up. So. not matter because you could just use the money to buy the Lego? It would depend. If they gave you that offer, it's like we'll give you £10,000 or we'll give you £10,000 worth of Lego. Them giving you Lego is them being cheap. Because that because it doesn't cost, cost them, them ten thousand. Yeah. What about if they said, um, "We'll give you ten thousand pounds, or we'll let you have um, any ten sets from our archives, or something? Maybe not a ten. Maybe that doesn't feel like enough. So you could get retired know. sets, and they'd go and take them out of their archives. You know, if you could get ten cafe corners. What are they? They're like. 30? Sealed in box. Yeah, that, so that's... about three grand, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that would be like 30 grand yeah. instead of 10. For a toe. I'd, For a toe. I'd, I'd, I'd... Where, do we, where do we find a Lego lorry? And to be fair, <laughs> I'm not sure I don't think... Exist. Yeah, and I don't think that we can make up these rules for them. No. Nice. You took my toe. Give me give me my 10, <laughs> ten archive sets. Do you think they've got 10 cafe corners just sat in their archive? I have no idea. Do you think they have every single Lego set? Don't know. This is not where I thought this podcast would no. go. It's a weird place. Where we are, or the archive. The conversation. Oh, okay, so. Anyway, back onto topic. Back onto topic. So for those people who haven't been hit by a lorry and lost a toe and got ten cafe corners, how do you enjoy Lego without spending too much? I mean, you know, is going down the bulk lots route sensible, rather than going to the pick-a-brick wall? I guess, probably, but it's more... Again, more effort. Yeah. And if you're only trying to buy parts to hold, like we do, mm. then just stop buying parts. Yeah. If you're if you're a mock builder, then it's probably worthwhile. You could also try and enjoy different aspects of the hobby. So instead of buying new sets, you could organise. A lot of people like that part of the the hobby yeah, sorting. That's not, fun bit. that's not the fun bit for you, but no. some people find that fun, and. Maybe this is now is the time where you have to cut back. You can. Isn't the problem with that though that you suddenly decide that you need to buy expensive storage solutions? For yeah, your that's parts? true. You could dust the Lego you currently have, take it all apart, that wash it. Does sound exciting. Yeah, okay. you're coming up with some amazing ideas. You can just spend a lot of time in YouTube streams watching other people building Lego. That's a great idea. Yeah. So, watching live streams or watching speed builds to get the experience of the new sets without having to buy them. Yeah. Um, setting rules for yourself that's like I won't buy any Lego that isn't in this theme like having those clear it it helps making the decision process not to yeah. spend easier like I've told myself I'm only going to do this so therefore I know this new DeLorean's come out but it's not Harry Potter so I can't get it kind of thing you think you could get a Harry Potter DeLorean mashup I'm sure you could stick it on the front of the Hogwarts Express that's the third one right yes not the third Harry Potter the third, no yeah yeah so Okay, so this is a shorter podcast than normal because we just wanted to give some suggestions for how to really continue your hobby without the expense. It's going to be hard to stick to if you're anything like us, but like Ian said at the start of the episode, don't put yourself into debt for plastic bricks. Yep. That's the smartest thing to do. And our pizza is here, so we're going to go eat that. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, if you want to listen to any previous episodes... You can check those out on our YouTube playlist, which I'll link up now, or is in the show notes, or in the description. And we'll catch you next week. Bye! Bye!